Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hire My VA Team in Business Building Podcast, where we help you to reclaim your freedom through hiring and thriving with virtual assistants without breaking the bank, which is your bank, the most important bank. Well, you know, my bank is more important than yours to me, but we want to help you not break your bank. <laughs> and I'm Dave Braun. I'm here with my partner, fantastic business mentor and coach. But of course, most importantly, my good friend, Larry Broughton. Handsome Dave, yeah. you sound particularly newscasterish today. <laughs> You're honing that radio voice. <laughs> it sounds awesome. It's good to see you, Dave. And I feel yeah, like I'm feeling maybe, Larry. maybe I'm tired, but I'm exactly. I'm feeling <laughs> a little a little punchy today. So I yeah, hope this is going to be a good topic. Yeah, I think we're both <laughs> getting a little bit my tired. Friends, here. Forgive yeah. me, my friends, if I am all over the board today. In the um, news today, Larry and Dave are recording a podcast. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> But it's right. good to see you, handsome Dave. Thanks for being on the journey with me. Um, yeah, it's a great journey, you, man. man. I can't imagine going through life without you. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, me either, man. Yeah. Well, we got a good question today, all right? right. Is yeah. how do you welcome a new team member, all right? Now, if you're a new team member, okay. How do you welcome a new team member into your organization? And of course, given what's been going on, how do you welcome them virtually? Oh, and of course, okay. and there's, there's going to probably be a mix, right? Sometimes they're going to be in person, sometimes virtually. So how do you welcome um, a new team member, you know, on board? Well, that's good. I, I would, I don't think you can start with that though, Dave. I think we have to go back to like, what is your interview process been like? What's oh, yeah. been your recruiting process, right? And um, certainly for those folks who have been through either our victory program or mastermind or read the victory book, or they've gone through the hire my VA program. There's tons of information in, in there about yeah. recruiting, right? And that's making sure that the people that you're recruiting know your core values. They know your vision. They know your mission. Absolutely. If you've done that, then your job is partly done already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, but let's assume that you yeah. didn't. Well, those are some of the things that you need to make sure that they understand yeah. your core values. <laughs> yeah. They understand your vision. They understand your mission. They understand what's the corporate culture of your organization look and feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have gone through those and you've already done that, then it's just a reinforcement, a reminder. Yeah. Of, I would start there at a minimum. Yeah. I, I mean, I would too. And, and I think that is important, obviously, if you're going to be uh, hiring somebody virtually versus in, port, in person, you got to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, so that's kind of, softy-ish fluff fluff yeah. skills but i i can think back of times because we've done this right and we've done it wrong mm -hmm. over the years let's just be honest okay yeah. and i can tell you those times when we've done it right we we've, we've done a lot of the housekeeping stuff before they've got there mm -hmm. you know i think one of the worst things we can do is if a team member shows up and says hey i'm here for my first day of work and people look around like oh i didn't know we had somebody oh. new starting today you know, like, oh. uh, where, where are they going to sit? Where's their yeah. office? Where's oh, their, yeah. what cube are they going to be in? Uh, do yeah. we have a phone for them? Um, that kind of stuff, no worky very well. Yeah. Conversely, if when they show up, they walk in the door, whether you have a receptionist or it's you or whomever, they, ah, Dave, it's great to see you. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> We're so glad that you're here. Yeah. Right? That, and like, You've got their plate, their plate, their workstation already set up. They've got you got their computer. You've got their phone already set up. Those are good. I think you send in the right signal to the team member. I'm in the right place. I feel yeah. welcomed. They and wanted me. There's no value. Like, imagine you go to somebody's home that you know, knock, 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 and they open the door and they've got a weird look on their face, like, what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, that doesn't feel very comforting, right? Yeah. Oh, 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 we had dinner plans. Oh. Well, let me make dinner. Oh, before we do that, let me uh, clean a house. Yeah, like when uh, I come over to your house, it's like, come on in. Everyone says hi. You're welcome. You know, so glad that you're yeah. here. It's like I, I'm not even I'm not a family member, but I feel welcomed every time. You know, and that's I think similarly how it, it ought to be, right? So I have like the basic tools already set up: computer, phone, email address. If you can get the business cards down before they even arrive, there's really few reasons why you be. couldn't. Yeah. Unless like you hire them and you, they start the next day. Business cards are an easy thing to turn around. 
And so whoever handles business cards, Dave, in the organization can be confirming email address and all that kind of stuff. Like, what do you want to be called? What do you want to have on your business card? Make sure the title is right. You know, if right. you put titles on business cards, all those kind of things. Um, I know one of the things that Melissa used to do, Melissa is, you know, my executive assistant and our office manager. She was so good or is so good at getting all this stuff ready, mm -hmm. you know, and she'd make sure that like, if, they, if they're going to get a parking pass, they have their parking pass. Right. All those little housekeeping tips are done before they get there. I think those would help. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, you want to do that to start them off on the right foot. And I think Larry, you, you hit on something really good is just, you know, think about how would they feel most welcome? That's, that's one aspect, but then what you could do is you could just, you know, visualize in your mind that mm -hmm. this is your first day in your own office. Yes. You know, it's like, okay, you know, maybe the one thing to send, you know, just from the beginning, it's like, okay, where are they going to park their car? Yeah. Right. Where do they park their car? Where's the best entrance for them to come into? Nice. Right. Think about what is the expected starting time, you know, and are they going to, you know, like when I was working in the corporate world, there was, a, there was a guard at the desk. Right. So, you know, and then I'd have to go in and sign my name. And the, one of the first things I would do when we got there is they'd go take your picture and give you a badge. So you would have access. So just start thinking through, um, walk them through what is it that if you were in their position that you would want to have happen? Well, Dave, that is a really good reminder. And it reminded me of uh, like, why is it that Melissa is so good? It was, she, she does oh, well. Yeah. She's high in empathy. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's put ourselves as the business owner or the business leader, um, as the entrepreneur in the shoes of our new team member. Yeah day one, there's going to be a little bit of anxiety mm -hmm. automatically. They're going to be nervous. Yes. They're going to be questioning themselves. Do I measure up? Mm -hmm. How do I make sure that they, that the, you know, reinforce that they made the right decision. Right. And so if we put ourselves in their shoes and show some empathy um, by doing what you just got through saying, imagine like they're going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. Be ready. Yeah. So they'll Absolutely. show them where do they get their name badge? Where do they park their car? I think that, I think those are good tips for us, for, for them too, Dave. You know? Yeah. And then, and, you know, we talked about, let them know once they get there in the office, let them know where everything is. And when like we say, mature, kind of, yeah. And when we say everything, it means everything. Tell them where the bathroom is. Tell them where the, um, you know, the water is. Tell them where, if they get need, if you have snacks, where the snacks are, tell them where the supplies are, tell them. And, and of course you're going to, if, if it's in person, you're going to have to say, we got to walk you through some emergency training, right? So stairs are over there. At least do some of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So really get down and think about, okay, is there, what, it, what, what all do we need? And of course, as you're thinking about this, make sure you start like a little um, checklist for yourself because yes. I mean, you're going to be growing and you're going to be bringing more people on or even replacement people. You're going to do this again. And why do you want to have to start from scratch? Yeah, here's another couple of at least one more soft skill thing before we switch into or I've got a couple of hard skilled ones as well or not hard skill but practical scientific or, parts yeah. I don't know how to describe it right now <laughs> but I what I like used to like doing is that if I knew there are things about let's say Dave that I know that you like angels baseball and I, how did mm -hmm. I learn that? Well, during the interview process, it just kind of came up. And I learned that, you know, you've got this jail ministry. And I know that, you know, um, Cheryl works at this particular place. As I'm walking around giving you the tour of the office and I'm introducing you to people, don't underestimate the power of this, that I'm introducing you to other teammates, you know, mm -hmm. and not just leaving it up to Dave. You might be an absolute introvert and not like inter introducing yourself to other teammates. If I do that for you, I'm building a bridge and I can yes. say, hey, Shane, I know that you love Angels baseball. Mm -hmm. Dave loves Angel baseball, too. You guys ought to, you know, walk across the parking lot and go to an Angel game sometime, you know, giving those little cues because those can open up conversations yes. for each other as well. But let's not forget there's all these softy things, but there are other things that have to be done. That is going to make them feel welcome. They've got to get their team member or employee handbook. Someone yes. has to go through the benefits and the payroll stuff, right? Um, 
I, I do remember early, early on at my former company in San Francisco, we brought on a, a new team member and we were winging it and we didn't even go through their new hire paperwork, like getting their insurance stuff filled <laughs> out. Yeah. And like it came time for oh. payroll and we didn't even have their payroll stuff mm. filled out. Yeah. So they were there, they were on, on board for two weeks before we haven't even filled out, you know, their, their, pay, their payroll stuff. Ooh. And I put myself thinking back now, I'm almost embarrassed to say it, mm -hmm. you know, out loud, yeah. but it, it, it happened. We learned from it at least. Right. And I, so I wonder like, did that person really feel that welcome? I can tell you they didn't stick around for very long, so probably not. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So there are those kind of things. There are so many things, David, as you said, develop a checklist, an onboarding checklist. We've got them in our organization, right? And it's by mm -hmm. department, and you just check them off as you go through. And again, you're setting the tone. When the new team member sees that you care this much that you have a checklist for them, it really helps. I can tell you years ago, and I mean, years ago, when I worked at McDonald's, which was the first place I was ever formerly a manager, you know, before you even went on the floor, you they had a checklist. And there were certain videos. Back then, they had both beta and VHS videotapes that you had to watch before you even stepped on the floor, before you even put your uniform on, mm -hmm. right. you know, that they made you watch, right? I felt like, hey, I was on the team before I even started meeting people. They taught me about the lexicon and lingo, you know, uh, of the organization. I learned a little about a little bit about the history of the organization. Yeah, that and, might be something to consider. Yeah, and, and you, you know, we I think we also have to remember that when people are coming in their first day, or either virtually or not, it can easily be a fire hose of information, right? Yeah. And, you know, just make sure you're cognizant of that, you're aware of that, right? So that they at least, um, you know, you keep it open that they say, well, they can, they can ask you questions, right? As the supervisor, right? Assuming you're the supervisor or as a minimum, you're, you're going to introduce them to their supervisor, whomever, or mentor, whoever's going to help walk them through the process and remind them that there's where all this stuff is, right? Yeah. Well, Dave, this is all really good. I mean, there's been a lot of stuff that will work both for in-person hires and virtually, but there probably are a few things for a virtual hire that's going to be a little bit different than somebody who is in person. Do you have a, a couple of clues and maybe that'll trigger, get my brain thinking as well on what you might do differently for a virtual hire? Yeah, I would say, you know, for a virtual hire, one of the big things are going to be, you know, and there's, there's Larry, there's even, even if it's virtual, there's still a lot of overlap, Sure. but you know, like, like for example, if somebody's an in-person hire, you're going to want to let them know that, oh, here's where we have our team meetings and they're once a week on this true. day or whatever. Right. Put that on your calendar. That's well, true. that's the same kind of thing. We have to overly communicate that to our virtual folks and say, here's the zoom link right? Here's where we go every day. Put this in your calendar, however you calendarize it. Sure. You know, and if you need to, um, and here's how we're going to communicate when we're not on Zoom, we're going to communicate via, you know, Slack or whatever project, product, project management software that you sure. use. Sure. Here's how you're going to communicate, you know, so you, you got to go a little bit overboard there because, you know, virtually communication is so, so important. So you've really got to, you know, encourage that. So as you are finding, you know, giving somebody an email address, which you got to do, you got to get them access to your project management um, sure. solution, right? Sure. And, you know, that, that, so that's, that's just, you know, one thing for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, one of the, another thing about virtual stuff is to be really clear, I think. Again, um, people can't meet your expectations in the, unless they know <laughs> yeah, that's what right. your expectations are. Right. Yeah. That's both virtually and in person, but particularly virtually. So if you've got a virtual assistant who's working around the world in another mm -hmm. country in a different time zone, you need to be really clear about what's expected of the hours that they'll be working. Right. Unless it's a truly a 1099. Well, I guess it doesn't even matter. Right. Because it's, it's they don't they don't go by the same 1099 rules. Never mind. Disregard that. But, you know, like for us, for instance, we make sure that there's some overlap. Right. Right. Um, mm -hmm that there's some availability, even though right. they're, you know, in the Philippines, for instance, there's got to be some overlap. So you make sure that that's, that you're really clear about that. Another thing it might be is that if it's not really evident in your team member handbook, talk about um, 
dress code yeah. and expectations about how they show up with their appearance with you and with clients, mm -hmm. for instance, right? Like the way I'm dressed right now, wearing a ball cap and wearing a, you know, a pullover, that yeah, wouldn't fly <laughs> if I'm going to be meeting with, with, with clients. Yeah, that's right. Right. Um, it's fine if, you know, we're just doing a morning stand up and it's just us um, in our organization. That, that's, that would be fine. But after that stand up, they better be in professional garb if we're meeting with, with clients, right? right. Or potential clients, right? Yep. Your team members won't know that unless you tell them this, unless it's documented somewhere. And you can't expect, I'm sorry, you can't expect that just because it's in your employee handbook or it's in the team member mm -hmm. handbook that they're going to read it. Yeah. If you read every page <laughs> as the business owner, every page of your employee handbook, most yeah. people have not. It's funny in, in the hire my VA program, you know, we've got this great, amazing multi-page detailed template that you can grab and use that as a great starting point. Um, and I remember, you know, I put it together and I wrote it. I don't think I remember half of what's in it. It's a starting point. point, my friends. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, well, and the other thing too, Larry, when you talk about virtually, I think that's important is when you talk about dress, but part of it is, you know, maybe haircut a little bit. You can't be too shaggy, but then the next what's thing the is- the background look like? The background, exactly. You know, and, and um, for, for some people it works to, you know, use this virtual background and you can put mm -hmm. it in there, but- you know, a lot of times that may not work or that's very distracting and it just doesn't yeah. look that professional. If you have a good background like you and I have, mm -hmm. that's that that can be really helpful. Yeah. But like if you're yeah. let's be really specific. This is this has happened. Um, yes. <laughs> where um, you're doing an interview or you're doing a um, you're with a client and you got, you know, a dirty bed in the background or laundry on the floor or whatever it is that doesn't fly well. Yeah. Okay. So set those yeah. expectations and have the courage to bring it up as you see it. It's called yes. spotlight coaching, right? Yeah. If these people are representing you with your clients, it's really clear. Now, again, this, let me be really clear. If it's just Dave and I, and we're talking and my dog is coming in and he wants to jump up, you know, put his paws up on the thing. That's not a big deal. Right. Frankly, even a lot of clients are forgiving of that. That's oh, yeah. nowadays that most people are working at home. But what a lot of clients aren't going to be expecting is if I get on camera and I don't have a shirt on and I'm, you know, whatever. You've heard of the crazy stories that have happened online. With Einstein hair. And <laughs> I was thinking stuff that's even worse than that. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there are some yeah. funny stories. Yeah. But, so another thing virtually, too, is, you know, you want to make sure you have a clear camera. But um, the other thing is make sure that they've got a decent, <laughs> a decent microphone. Right. Yes. It could be built into the computer, sure. But um, regardless of that, and if you've hired somebody from you know, overseas, like we do at the Philippines, the folks, if they don't have a good enough microphone, and just spend a few bucks and buy them one. Give yeah. them a little bit of extra money and let, and let them get it. So that's a, you know, make sure that they've got some of those basic tools. Now you're not gonna ship them a computer or anything. The understanding when they come on as a virtual assistant, they're going to provide that hardware, yeah. but you may want to um, make a little bit of an investment in a few things to make things depending on what it is that more clear. Depending yeah. on what it is that you're hiring them for. Yeah. Like if they're going to be doing video editing, if they're going to be doing, um, that's right. You know, online with mm. you, you know, recording stuff for clients. Yes. You're going to want a good computer or a good microphone. I've just got, I used a snowball here. It's very inexpensive. I actually have a little screen on it as well. I've got that one as well. Your CR, really good USB. Day. Yeah, those are again, good. not expensive at all. No. You know, no. It's just a USB. You just pl plug them in, right? Yeah. Um, and frankly, you know, we've even done podcast recordings with guests sometimes and encourage them to use microphones and they've not. And then there's been a problem when you just use the computer microphone. It just yeah, sounds sure. tinny, boxy. And um, you can get away with a lot of things with audio when people have high expectations for audio. They have less ex expectations or a little lower on video, but it's audio has to be really right, good. Right. Right. And I think it would, it, you know, definitely something to consider would be, you know, headphones and, you know, a mic. 
and yeah. make sure it's a, the right kind of mic because, you know, sometimes we'll pick up stuff in the background and like in the Philippines, there might be some chickens running around or, you know, sure, or, sure. or it could be a young, you know, a young mom or dad and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the, in the house. So you maybe you can avoid picking some of that stuff up. So yeah, so those, those are a couple of things that are different. I think virtually. Yeah. And I think the same things that we talked about, Dave, when with in-person hires about introducing them to people, take an extra, extra time and do a virtual meeting with everyone that's on the team to introduce someone. Yeah. So that the first time that your new team member who works virtually is going to interact with a fellow team member, they're not by themselves. Mm -hmm. If possible, again, if possible, that you've yes. already done the warm introduction yeah. with folks, okay? It just helps them feel more welcomed, right. you know? Right. I, mean, I, I can remember a neighborhood that I moved into one time, right? And not one person ever came and introduced themselves mm. uh, to me, but I moved into another neighborhood and people were coming and bringing cookies and, hey, if you ever need anything, I'm just right over there. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so different. It's yeah. night and day. Makes I didn't change, sense. you know? Except, you know, I was going to get, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, and, and, and one other thing from a virtual perspective is, is if you, and you can translate this to when, um, when somebody is there, there in person. So you, you walk into the office um, in the morning and guess what normally happens? You say, Hey, everybody, good morning. Or you're here. Hello, I'm here. Right. Or, How's it going today, right? There's a little bit of a greeting and an acknowledgement that you're starting your day. Oh, and yeah. conversely, that you're ending your day. Like, hey, see you tomorrow, guys. I'm heading home early or I'm staying late because, you know, whatever. But you have to do that same thing virtually as well. You have to give them um, the guidelines on how to check in in the morning and how to check out at night. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that you know that they're around. Yeah. Again, I'm just going to repeat what I said earlier. Um, people won't meet your expectations unless they know them. Mm -hmm. So if you expect that each morning they're going to say, Hey, I'm here and here are the top three things I'm working on today. They're not going to know that unless you let them know. Yeah. That. And nothing right. will make them more defeated. If after a week and you finally, you're, you're upset with their brand new hire and you're upset and say, Hey, I'm supposed to be getting these three things that you work on each day. And it was on page 47 of the team member handbook. Why am I not getting these? Yeah. That's not a great way to start. Okay. No. There's a mantra that I have that I've been saying like daily and very intentionally once the, uh, the, like we're still in the pandemic phase, right? We're about 18 months in at this point as we're recording this. Um, and we started this, I think almost the first day offer um, the, the mantra goes something like this uh, offer grace, patience, and forgiveness freely and often. Mm -hmm. that's a great mantra to tell yourself and your team members when there's a new team member who comes on board, offer grace, patience, and forgiveness freely and often. The first time you went on to a team, you made mistakes, you screwed things up, you didn't do things exactly right. 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 Um, yeah. But expecting perfection from a brand new team member right out of the gate is not a very welcoming. That's true. Feeling, right? Yeah. Offer extra coaching in the beginning. And um, I think another thing that will help people feel welcomed is actually over communicating in the beginning. Yeah. You know, I think that would be very helpful as well, but yeah. basically being thrown to the wolves, so to speak, and just figure it out is not a very welcoming feeling. No, it's a, it's not a good, it's not a good strategy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a winning strategy. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think the other thing to think about too, is that, you know, you've put some effort into hiring somebody, right? Yes. To help you, right? You put some effort, you've gone through people. It's like, you, you put that same effort into getting them started. Right. Cause you want them to be with you for a long time. Yeah. They, the, the, the reflexive response is, hey, they're big boys and girls. They can handle it or I don't have time to deal with it. I promise you this. This is one of those times where your yeah. extra time that you invest in this will, like most investments, will reap big rewards mm -hmm. later on. That's right. For sure. No, no sink or swim. No. Yeah. Worry. Yeah. Yeah. That's never a winning strategy. Right. Okay. Awesome. Did we, did we get what we need on this one? I think so. That was a lot of fun. I think we, we, we got some good stuff. You know, you and I talk about a lot of different things and, and, you know, more than more we've learned and we got to update our course with some of this stuff pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We yeah. Do. yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Remember building a team is the way to reclaim your freedom. 
And we're here to help you with our course and community. And of course, our white glove service where we find a rock star VA for you. So three things we'd love for you to do right now. We'd really appreciate it if you do it. Number one, subscribe to this podcast. If you haven't already done so, of course, um, subscribe on your phone, your iPhone, your Android phone. Um, and also on YouTube, uh, if you're watching us there, you know, just hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell next to it so that you get reminders when we have new episodes mm-hmm. coming out. And then number two, give us a rating. We'd love to have a five-star rating, but at least give us a comment um, below this video. Um, that would be great. Anything, um, ask us a question. Um, um, give us your tips on, on how to bring on um, a, a new team member um, really effectively. You may have something that we didn't cover here. Um, and then of course, number three is go to hiremyva.com for more information on our course and community and our white glove service. Remember, even without experience, you'll learn how to prepare for hire and thrive with virtual assistants. Larry and I have helped lots of folks. We want to help you as well, but we can only do that if you join us. So to join us and to find out more about us, go to hiremyva.com. Right. Hey, in uh, this uh, book, uh, Flashpoints for Achievers, that we put out uh, several years ago, there's a flashpoint that says something like this. Teamwork, which we're talking about today, teamwork divides the task and multiplies the success. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Teamwork divides the task and multiplies the success. Why not build highly effective teams? Why not? You know, so many of us are afraid to do that. And I can tell you, we've got a couple of coaching clients who said they finally felt like a real business when they started adding real team members to the team. If you want to find any real freedom in your life, you're not going to do it alone. The lone wolf uh, idea about entrepreneurship is just an absolute myth. Okay. If you want freedom, you need to find, you need to build a team. And I'll just leave you with this like I do every week. All right. God bless you. God keep you and God hold you. All right, my friends, go get them. We'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye, folks.